Oh, hi. Thanks again for helping us with that data. I mean, the feed only lasted about 30 seconds, and it's not that useful, but, well, we tried. We were connected for half a minute and received enough data to fill five holodisks. It looked like nonsense at first, but we decoded it. It was all biometric data, life signs from Mr. House. The technology he's using is so advanced that it samples data hundreds of times per second. It's fascinating, but depressing. Whatever technology he has can't possibly be practical for the people out here. After two tries, I think I've learned enough. I'm sure there's something more promising I could be helping the other followers with. Uh, oh yeah. I didn't tell you about the first time. I'd rather not talk about it if you don't mind. True. All right. The first try was a little less professional. Someone important on the Strip had access to some of House's technology. Specifically, a Securitron. And more specifically, the someone was Benny. I know, I know, he shot you in the head and everything. But this was a while ago. I knew he was sleazy, but I didn't realize he was so cold-blooded. The Securitron was disabled somehow. Might have been an EMP, given some of the damage I saw. Anyway, he wanted it re-enabled and connected to Mr. House's data network. The trick was getting it to be invisible on the network. If Mr. House detects a rogue Securitron in his system, he remotely fries it. Getting around that security feature was a bit tricky. Yeah, strange as it sounds, I figured that badmouthing one of the Strip's most powerful people wasn't a good idea. The only reason why I'm telling you any of this is because he's gone now. He sure didn't. Benny was pretty tight-lipped and cryptic about the thing, but he did let me poke around in it for a while. I wound up helping Benny a lot more than he helped me. Once he had access to the Securitron's memory banks, he kicked me out of the tops. Big surprise, right? Should have seen that coming. What do you I already told you. The recent disturbance at Gamora has been resolved. Do not be afraid to patronize them. Fine by me. Welcome, sir.
Hey there. You look at... Fine by me. Gonna be hard covering you when I can't move my legs. What is it? I'll make my way there. In the years before the Great War, Big Mountain had been the home to the brightest minds of the 21st century. Scientists of vision were drawn to the facility to tackle the greatest technological challenges of the era. They sought to create a new world, fueled by technology for the benefit of all mankind. Sonic emitters, space-age alloys, DNA hybridization, 
Force field particle research. Autodoc advances in cranial, cardiac, and trauma surgery. The hopes and dreams of a century became realities in the electronic forges of Big Mountain. The nucleus of this research was the Dome, a huge stone facility that held the labs of every science known to man. It was a think tank where no problem could not be solved, where no question could not be answered. The Great War brought a new energy to Big Mountain and its scientists. Although sheltered from the front lines, the scientists waged their own war, fighting their battles at the atomic level. Equations and calculations marched endlessly across chalkboards and computer terminals toward one solution, winning the war. For years, the minds and computers of Big Mountain were a blaze of trajectories, weapon schematics, and nuclear theories. The problems began to outpace the solutions, first geometrically, then exponentially. As the war escalated, so did the questions. On the night of October 23rd, 2077, the scientists received an answer that put all their questions to rest. In the aftermath, Big Mountain's silent experiments went to sleep, their creators slowly dying in the new world that had been left behind. And the great stone in the middle of the Big Empty lay untouched, filled with countless technological wonders. Wonders that, in the end, had been answers to the wrong question.
I thought I heard the pacification fields kick in. All right, shh. Nobody move. I'll handle this. Be warned, intruder. You are in the presence of a mighty think tank of Big Mountain. The collective geniuses of... We! Why, Oppenheimer, which one of you self-professed geniuses has been adjusting my volume knob? Who was it? Was it you, H? Oh, Dr. O, was it? Likely story. O couldn't spark two neurons if they were in a lattice of biomed gel. What? Me? Breaking news, Klein. It wasn't me, all right? I'm the robotical engineer. A to sound waves. That's his specialty. You always do this. You always demean me in front of guests. And it's not O, all right? It's... Enough! Either of you do it again, it'll be the last time. Now, now, great. Oh, I forgot what I was saying. What was I talking about? Did, did it just say something? Anyone catch that? Boros, you work with animals. Translate. It's a lobotomite, here, in the dome. Oh, as if this situation couldn't get any worse. Now we've got lobotomites. Dalla, get the spray before it excretes all over everything. That response seemed demanding, as if cutting to the case. Uh, chase. How surgical. Reminds me of... Dr. Klein, a transmission from the Forbidden Zone, coming right at us. It can only be... If it isn't my old colleagues, the mighty think tank of Big Mountain. Big fools, all of you. It is I, Dr. Mobius, transmitting from my dome-shaped dome in the Forbidden Zone, a zone that is, yes, forbidden to you. Even now, my deadly robo-scorpions swarm across Big Mountain with their pincers and pointy laser tails. Soon, all science will be mine. Even the technology sealed in the Big Mountain Research Centers cannot save you. So cower in your think tank. Wait for the end. That's all. Uh, goodbye. Mobius. Always the same broadcast. He's clearly mad, driven insane by his flawed and imprecise kindergarten-level research methodology. What are we going to do? There's no way we can breach the Forbidden Zone. There's those robot scorpions everywhere. The Forbidden Zone, where no brain has ever entered, nor ever returned. Except Dr. Mobius and the technologies that could save us. They are out of our reach. And Dr. Mobius mocks us. Did you see his cracked monitor? He's clearly let himself go. What? Ask the lobotomite for help? A, I think you need the fluid levels in your logic assist pumps checked. If this lobotomite responded, Dr. Klein, then it is clearly intelligent. Perhaps even displays heretofore unknown levels of helpfulness. But what of its brain? We scooped that out. We don't even know where we left it. And for putting it back in, none of us have the knowledge. Yes, but it's still aware and responsive. Look at it. It's regarding us even now, with its big teddy bear eyes. If we ask it politely, and leave the part about the unnecessary, ruthless lobotomizing out, it might be favorably disposed to us. We removed your brain, yes. So soft, barely wrinkled, yet so flush with knowledge and experience. 
Brain extraction technology has been standard practice at Big Mountain for an immeasurable amount of time. Once the brain was out, then came the coils. The Tesla coils. The coils of Nikola Tesla. Yeah, Abe, no need to brag. Wherever your brain is, it's transmitting thoughts to you through the... what? The, um... Uh... The Tesla coils! In its head! This is fortunate in many respects. If your brain was anywhere in the dome, why, you could access your aggression centers. Circumventing the pacification field, this is a no-no. We have never been in a fight. We do not want that. Reminds me of my days in American High. And Richie Marcus. Darla, was it necessary this time? I assume full responsibility. I take my duties in the prodding and excision of living, breathing tissue quite seriously. Although in truth, the Autodoc had done most of the work already. Quite industrious, almost cut into all my investigations. Once it had removed the brain and I misplaced it, other organs began to cry for direction, using your nerves as telegraph wires. Rather than let them send their signals, I removed them as well. Shh, little organs. Go to sleep in your tanks. Dala loves you. First was the heart. I mean, second was the heart. Brain was first. Third was the spine. Spine. Totally overrated, that arrangement of vertebrae. Look at me, with my lumbar and thoracic curvature. Never had a use for any of that. Spineless is what I prefer. To be correct, you should say, the Autodoc took out your brain. It did all the heavy lifting. It has never worked so hard before. It was unusual. It worked so hard on your surgery, it destroyed its own memory. How odd. I bet your brain remembers what happened. That Autodoc junk heap was one of Mobius's creations, like the rest of the talking scrap metal in the attic. After that, the brain lost itself. Not in the metaphysical sense. Might have gotten flushed into one of the pipes. Actually, that's pretty likely. If so, it was flushed all the way to Mobius. Flush! That is the sound of flushing. Why, the Fisher of Rolando, enough of this biological surgery talk! Lobotomite, listen to my voice. It denominates me to ask, but we need your help. In most probable of probabilities, our enemy, Mobius, has your brain. This is not good. He will most likely come after our brains next. We want you to stop him, somehow, with science. That is correct, yes. I hope you're not demonstrating resentment now. If you are, well, we can't have that. We have no idea! This line of questioning isn't important to us right now! Why are you asking these tangential questions? Stop it! We need these technologies. You need to get them. You must get them. 
You are equipped to retrieve the technologies with your primitive form. We are not. It's kind of embarrassing. You have hands, and uh, a heartbeat, sort of, and eyes, mostly the hands. There's door handles and lockers and... Enough! We need your help. Will you help us? Excellent. This is turning out much better than the activate the retreat protocols and cower in my room idea I had earlier. Agreed. Oh, and I've used my robotical knowledge to, um, uh, transmit the radio map waves to... Settle down, Eight. I would have gotten it in a second, all right? Eights transmitted the last known coordinates of the research centers. They, um... They, well, move sometimes. Or get buried. Or blow up. Eight is correct. All we need are the schematics. This does not mean we do not want the cold hard technology, however. So do not give in to your biological tired laziness and decide you would sweat too much carrying them. You have a new spine. Use it. And even if you die in the act of reclamation, simply reaching them will auto-transmitify the schematics to us. That is still good. For us. The technologies are the X2 transmitter antenna array, used to focus coherent thought at excessively high frequencies. The psychoanalytic cardiac dampening sneaky stealth suit, a suit like nothing this world has ever heard, seen, or could ever see. And AIDS sonic sound wave emitter projecto gun, able to broadcast sound at lethal frequencies. It also gives a great bio-gel massage. There. We have informed you of all we need. We estimate if you are focused, your time investment will be minimal, uh, by our standards. If you work quickly, you will be the recipient of a gesture of gratitude from us. We do not bestow these old-world gestures lightly. Our intentions exactly. The important thing is you rush quickly through this task so as not to waste our time. Do not get curious or you will end up like the cat of Schrödinger. We feared you would be tempted to explore Big Mountain Crater and examine the many amazing non-mandatory research labs that lie off your designated path. The many such optional explorations are discouraged. Work hurriedly as if you have blinders on and leave curiosities and items of interest alone. So many sciences and developments. Pass them by. Let impatience and the desire to simply finish, to end it all quickly and carelessly guide you. Right you are, Ace. In our test results, we'll make a note about how quickly you ran our maze. Uh, experiment. Nobel. Challenge. After all, there will be plenty of time afterward to partake of the experiments once our bidding is done. What illogic is this? Keep your filthy penis-tipped feet out of our labs and secrets! There are things here no lobotomite was meant to see. Things that would astound and possibly terrify. Terrify! Yeah, we don't come into your lab and decant your solutions. Only the magnificence of our monitors allow for true comprehension of the wonders of Big Mountain. 
Shield your jellied eyes lest they burn from your skull. Ah, that is correct. You must walk upon your many penised feet. Much slower than our advanced hovering robotical frames. The little teddy bear could always run right into the pylon perimeter on its thick, turgid feet, returning it to us quickly and directly, yeah, directly. The radar fence that surrounds the big mountain crater will prevent, uh, protect you from straying beyond the facility. The mighty radar fence protects us all. Get too close to the blinking posts, and the proximity warning shall be your warning. You are too close. If you get near it, your vision will blur as the electrodes in your head shut off one by one. Click, click, click. Possible memory loss will occur, along with long-term nerve degradation. It is tied to not having a brain attached to your nervous system. But the nerve degradation is nothing to worry about. Such degradation would take many lifespans to become evident, and all biology dies. Such tiny inconveniences are less than the greater convenience and conveyance. You see, if rendered unconscious by the pylons, you will be returned to the sink, seemingly instantaneously, by your deadened perceptions. Out there? We're not going out there! It's dangerous! We're smart, not suicidal! Oh, uh, Dr. Klein? Dr. Klein? If I may intersect for a moment... What is it? The lobotomite is asking me things, oh, and I'm trying to ignore them. My processors can't ignore you both at the same time. Well, you know how we asked it to fetch the sonic emitter thing? <laughs> Turns out we already have it. <laughs> what are the odds? What is this, a high school science fair? Get your act together. You're making us look like a collection of round earthers. You're always yelling. My receptors can't take it anymore. And neither can my feelings. I am yelling because you contaminated specimens can't keep your probes off the volume knob on my voice module! It is truly the end of all intelligence when the lobotomite speaks more wisdom than you geniuses! So, if we have the sound wave, sonic projecto thing gun, then what in Heisenberg's name do we need from X-8? Anyone? I believe we need a new frequency embedded into the gun. It was designed to broadcast many sounds once charged. We just don't know the frequency. And it is lost in X-8. Just as X-8 is forever lost to us. The sadness of my high school days. The sadness of my youth. My youth lost. Oh, really, Boros? All you did in high school was call me Fink Tattletail and all the kids you hated. You little teacher's pet brown hound. Give the lobotomite the emitter. Does it have an audio effect frequency loaded? Oh, I don't think so. Wait. What is he doing? I think he's sonjaculating into the gun. Getting it warmed up. Ding. Turkey's done. You give it to the lobotomite. I'm not touching that thing. Oh, I don't think so. I'll do it if you two are going to be ashamed of your own technological needs. Let me give it a little sonic sterilization first. Alright. All antibacterial fresh. Here, my little teddy bear. I have thoroughly removed all Robco Terminate code spew from the device. It is clean, shiny, and ready for your... hands.
What did it say? Spit lead? What, like pencils? Oh, I think it wants a combustion pistol. A gun? Are you mad? We can't give it a gun. Guns kill. Leave big open holes in you that are like sores, but worse. Dr. Eight is correct. We already have given the teddy bear a lethal sonic death ray, filled with his sonic ejaculate and sterilized by my soft wooing. Giving the teddy bear a gun would be the equivalent of following a glass of hemlock with an Abraxo chaser. Delicious and redundantly deadly. If you're going to bring the Socratic method into it, fine. Give the Lobato bear a combustion gun. Burroughs, don't you have something like that? Are you mad? We can't give it a gun. Guns? Wait, I said that already. Yes, I have the Cyberdog gun. With the little floppy metal ears and the curious nose sensor. Here. Fine. Done. That gun makes me uncomfortable anyway. Always worried it's going to hump my chassis. Anything else, Lobotomite? Fine. Moros, more ammo. The good stuff. Top shelf ammunition. Let's see. Hollow point? That's worthless, but tasty. Oh, and here's some JFP. As if bullets need jackets. The JFP might make it ill and poop a lot, but when you're hungry, you're hungry. Careful where you're pointing that. That device wasn't always a weapon. It was more like a force field kind of thing. Once. Force fields prevent us from moving. Forward or backward. They are irritating. The sonic emitter was specially designed to disable our own safety fields here in Big Mountain. When some of us lost our access passes, Dr. O. That only happened once. And I know you were behind stealth fielding my lab keys, Dalla. You formographer. Dr. O, you rewind that comment. Plenty of rewinding already going on in your formography tapes. Surprise the things don't snap out of their cases with repeated observations. Yes. Maybe. Well, no. Not currently. Yeah, we lost that part of the schematics. Or Boros did. In one of the stupid labs. Or inside one of the stupid pets. It is lost. All questions lead to this conclusion. The blue fields within Big Mountain shall be fielded with force. Forever. Fine, so... Yes, get these things for us. Do not attempt to comprehend their complicated schematics. That is for us to do. Well, good. What are the token words spoken in this case? Uh, thank you? Uh, yes. Thank you. Wait, is it leaving? But, it's not a climb. The lobotomite will need rest. Recuperation. Things like that. I volunteer my chambers, so it might be stared at. My monitor radar slowly scanning its form to collect sensitive data. No! That would put it too close to us. It could press buttons, turn lights on and off, and worse, let other lobotomites in. We could give it Mobius' old room. That's where its brain got scooped out anyway. And plus, some of its parts are already there. Might be more comforting for it to hang out with its spine and heart. Home is where the heart is, after all. <laughs> See what I did there? Wet literal. I suppose. We'll have to move that couch out of there. Been putting that off too long. Eight says, let the lobotomite take the Sing Central Intelligence personality chip and reinstall it. That stuffy Mobius program Butler can walk the lobotomite, feed it, barter with it for us. 
It would also prevent it from going to Higgs Village and taking up residence there with my teddy bears. And it would be nice to have it so close. Your logic combined with my desire to keep the think tank lobotomite free has swayed me. Here, I present the Sink Central Intelligence. Lobotomite, take this chip to the sink. Plug it in and make sure the chip is clean or it could skip. Then make whatever crude biologic demands you need of the sink. It will cater to most of your hormonal whims. Are there other chips? Are you echoing what he said, or are you asking for real? He's asking, yes. Dr. Klein, there are many other personalities. If you recall, you hurled them off the sink balcony after your argument with Mobius. It is not an argument if one is clearly right and the other is clearly wrong. I remember now. Yes, Lobotomite, there are other chips. If you want, find them. I believe they're stored on holotapes in many of our facilities. But you should stay out of those. No exploring and discovering things. The sink central intelligence should be enough for your... <laughs> needs. I cannot dispute your logic. Do we have objects to activate the chip's exchange routines? What? Like... Stuff? Things? Yes. Things. I don't know. Might be some old Nuka-Cola or Sunset Sarsaparilla bottle caps lying around. It's not currency, per se. Still might be enough to trade the sink's trade routines. Mobius put that test line for caps in the code as a debug command, I think. I don't believe that was Mobius's reason. His wild speculation concerning post-Holocaust economic systems was quite extensive, and of high decibel. Enough! Surrender these so-called bottle caps, Nuka and Sunset alike. In their role as things, they will serve as adequate test subjects. All right, all right, here, cap away. Hope that stupid ship chokes on them. Again, your logic is unassailable in its simplistic need. Oh? Fine. It's not going to help. That ship will probably refuse them anyway, as stuck up as it is. If I were not as intelligent as I am, I would feel as if perhaps I'm being tricked. Impossible. Oh. More. How do you make the lobotomite a bottle cap factory, Klein? Or better yet, give it a ton of things to activate the chip. Again, the logic of the request is clear. Tonnage is not needed, only adequate weight. Everyone, display your things. I do not understand, yet I am intrigued by this potential display. No, wait, you don't need to fill up the emitter again, really. I means things for trade. Display for trade. All right, let's consolidate. There's got to be some junk around here. Magazines, useless, more caps, medicinal supplies, useless. Here. Yes, you may need to wiggle it in a bit, but don't force it. We can't recode them if you break it. There is no more we can do to aid you, and our patience levels are depleted. Now go. Rest in the sink if you must, but leave us to our research. Uh, if you're done, can we move again? My biogel's starting to crampagulate. Of course! Go man your science stations! Go! I am surrounded by children.
Uh, I don't understand how you can stand those leg things. Breaking news! Talking lobotomite arrives in Think Tank. Its purpose, unknown. Oh? Oh, yes. I'm not going to bother correcting you. At least you got the doctor part correct. I can be grateful for that, Atoli. Stop the presses! Just in for my eye monitors. Is that Rob Kotek on your arm? It is! What's your agenda bringing that in here? How dare you bring Rob Kotek in here? What are you showing off? How great Robert House and his big company are? Ooh, we can make Securitrons better than any robot those geniuses of Big Mountain can make, and they'll last a thousand years. Uh, you're lucky I don't have hands to tear that dip boy off your arm, or feet to stomp on its stupid metal guts. Ugh. Damn Robco. <laughs> Worry about House? Why would I do this? Hope he died alone in a dingy room, streaming his last remaining bodily fluids into jars. And him and his dirty girl bots. Don't even get me started on those filthy biological catcher's mitts. Fine. Ask. All things robotical. You see a robot? I made it. See a broken robot? I made it that way. Deconstructed it down to parts. I have a gift with machines. I can render anything inoperable. Preserve them in a non-functioning state. Who asked you? You just wait until a working machine threatens you, and you'll wish I was around. Yeah, I do. It wasn't always, oh. I just took that one by default, because sometimes it's easier to accept the mistake as long as the purpose works. I don't want to get into it. It's a sore topic with me. It makes my gel ripple. Great! Psychology! Clearly the worst of the sciences, right after colostodiuretics. Okay, so my name is an O. Never was. It was circular, a single character, digit, but not O. But even with enhanced sensors, no one here could get it right. Always kept seeing the letter, not the number. Yes, thank you. Zero. I am zero. How hard is that? A narrow, thin zero. Zero's my name. I'm proud of it, all right? It doesn't get the recognition it deserves. Truth be told, my emotional attachment to it doesn't even register compared to just having people recognize the difference. It's just that they're both sort of round and hollow, so when they monitor scan them, they assume that, oh, it's O. Oh. Vivisect me, please.
have a few left. Let me check. Yeah, there were a few under the monitors here. Here you go. Keeps the place tidy. That genius Mobius somehow cobbles together these really impressive looking robot scorpions with spare parts. Even painted them. Try to see what makes them tick. Can't even examine them without them detonating all over me. Left with shrapnel and burns. Every time. Supposedly, he has even larger models, even a giant robot scorpion, hidden deep within the Forbidden Zone. Yeah, right. Giant monsters, sure. Yeah, crazy, right? Something right out of a midnight science fiction feature. Ridiculous. What are the odds? Big Mountain used to be a mountain. Then there was a slight mishap. Now it's a crater. The dome used to be buried, now it's exposed to the sky. Don't get me wrong. Makes the sky light up like a planetarium at night. All those spectra. So soothing. What? Did... Did I shoot myself with a brainial beam or something? That's brilliant! I mean, I would have come to the same conclusion... <laughs> eventually. Oh, uh, who am I deceiving? I never would have figured that out. I can't figure anything out. I'm... Uh, I'm useless. Exactly. At least the old name was indisputable. O oh, is more like surprise. Oh, look what I stepped in. Well, of course it does. That's the most lethal of mathematics. That's pretty cool, actually. Destroyer of numbers. I already wreck every robot I study. Why not basic arithmetic? I like your solution. With that kind of slash in the middle, I can set myself apart. If I wanted to. I make a zero in all the think tank. They won't be able to escape it. That diagonal slash right down the middle. Thanks. Talking to you, it really helped unclog some frustration. Talking. What a primitive form of thought kicking. You know, hearing my name said like that, it really derezzes my screens. As for discoveries, well, of course. Look at this. Just, uh, built it. Amazing, isn't it? It's a discovery. Killer miles beyond your understanding that... You know what? I'm not even gonna pretend. I broke one of the monitors. And those innards start falling out everywhere. If you could just hold on to that for me until, well... Forever, that would be welcome. You are an unusual specimen to so boldly walk into the mighty expanse of the think tank. Fearless and proud as a teddy bear. Between the extraction of their higher reasoning abilities and urination-inducing fear, most lobotomites dare not approach us, let alone speak to us. Yet you have no such fear. Facing me, epidermis fleshed with blood, plasma running molten beneath, your face contorting with muscular expression. Will you indulge me? Say a few words. Face towards the monitors, please, so that I might record it for further examination. Yeah. 
Yes, yes, go on. Seeing your lips and mouth forming words, both revolting and somehow... How does it feel to have the flesh roll around in your mouth like that? To control each muscle and the tongue? Like having a fish or extremely dexterous slug lolling and flopping in one's mouthful cavity. What? Nonsense. What? What are you doing? Stop it. Why? Why are you making me partake in this filthy formography? Enough. I am already intrigued. You have sufficiently percolated me. I don't know what it is about the biology of lobotomites. It, it infects my thoughts. All that skin and muscle and tissue. Perhaps, perhaps there is value in what you say. I, I did so enjoy breathing once, long ago. Would you? I feel so ashamed, but yet so intrigued. You'll need to give me a rest in between visits, or else my gel might run over. If you're ready, let me radar scan you. Slowly. methodology. His one terrible eye forever peers at us. An eye of ever-increasing magnification. He watches from his dome in the Forbidden Zone, spying on us all. Why, my little bear of teddiness? I am Dr. Dalla, first head chief researcher of mineralogy and medicinal sciences. I have 211 doctorates in both applied sciences and techniques to apply those sciences. I also possess a degree in curiosity and advanced curiosity. That is merely schooling, however. When possible, I prefer fieldwork and observation to holotape eidetics. It has proven useful, especially now. I have become the expert on humanology and lobotomite behavior here at Big Mountain. My research doesn't descend into formography. It is only science. Why, we create not only scientific marvels here at Big Mountain, but new sciences as well. Everything can be quantified, categorized, and dissected until every group can be subgrouped or partitioned. What is a name without a title or a suffix for the sake of hierarchy? It is a long-standing quantification of personality and importance. We could not do without it. Surely you must be aware of the gravity of such attached appellations, just as surely as you must have a title. Oh, a mailman. A delivery man. 
someone who takes parcels from place to place using their primitive feet or similar conveyance. You are the second one I've met in recent times. Very different specimens. Of course. You must have met others in your travels. This one had met other couriers, too. Although it sounded as if he hadn't met the correct one. He asked us all many questions, and then he asked a most perplexing one. We had to segment the event out of our memories for safety. I do not know, nor should we try to access it. Perhaps Klein has the logs. My evaluation would be to let your own curiosity go. I do not think that Klein remembers the conversation as being satisfactory. Oh, removing it is a simple procedure. Well, except the complications it can cause to the heart and spine. But once the heart and spine are gone, no trouble at all. Clamp the subject down. One laser incision around the skull. Crack. Snip. Done. The brain is finally free of the skin envelope, which is then kept automated for cleanup duties around Big Mountain. Lobotomites. With you, however... Something is definitely wrong. We've never had a lobotomite who kept speaking after being forcibly lobotomized. I am relieved the pacification field is working. If it didn't, I would broadcast some concern to my colleagues about safety protocols. That is a good question. My theory is that the Tesla coils in your brain pan are still connected to your brain somehow. It really could be anywhere. Brains are a lot smarter than most researchers give them credit for. We still have your spine and heart. If you were to somehow find your brain, wherever it slurped off to, you could humanically reduce yourself again. It is the pacification field emitters that are broadcasting into the emptiness of your skull. Without a brain, your aggression is suppressed in here. Why would you want such a thing? You might surrender to your hormones and commit primal aggression on me, on us, again and again. Then I would have to return the favor, activating my vivisectors and gently lobotomizing you from behind. Not something I would relish doing. No, the only way to circumvent the field is to have a brain, and we extracted that like we do all the lobotomites here. It'll all become clear. If not, at least we will have the technology here at the Dome, where all technology belongs. When we have all the technology, all the answers, we can share it with the world, piece by piece. All will be in order, and all will be like Big Mountain. The Big Empty? Now that's not a proper title for this research facility. You sound like previous test subjects that came here. This mountain, now crater, encompasses the sum total of knowledge of humankind. It is Big Mountain, where all questions can be answered. You'll see. No matter what your questions, Big Mountain will provide the answers, as it has done for so many before you. Oh yes. We've had other subjects visit. It's why we had to calibrate the pacification field and warm up our brainial beams and vivisectors. Only a short time ago, we had three minus one subjects arrive, and they ruined several experiments and even injured two of our staff. It is a shame their brains left with them. With you, however, we have taken precautions to ensure that problem won't repeat itself. We've conditioned you so you can't speak of this place, discuss our secrets, or attempt to use force against us in any way. Isn't that nice? Because three minus one is two. Two spoke to us, one after the other. One mean, one curious, 
But there was a third we didn't speak to. The last one is the minus one. It got traumatized, then taken to one of our medical centers for de-traumatization. A rather unsettling procedure. Ask Dr. O. And you could have asked eight once, until he was severely damaged in the attack. We like him better this way. Until I... Ah, predictable. The lobotomized specimen returns. Its purpose? Repetition. Chances of success? High. I don't like to talk about it. Eight, he can't talk about it. They fried his voice module. Something good. It wasn't all the visitors, though. Only one of them got out of control. He's the one that took control of Little Yangtze, our old human farm. This human. I can't believe it. He broke out of the think tank in seconds. Then he went for Yangtze, got bomb collars, and started practicing on the subjects that were still there until he got the right frequency. We were sending robots to stop him, and he was slicing and cutting through their shells with some souped-up laser gun like they were cheese paper. When he hacked into the mainframe, A tried to stop him and got fried. Me? He rerouted my processors to take control of the train network here. If you see the tunnels with the trains plowed into them, you can thank our visitor for that. He wrecked the whole place. While we were trying to keep containment on the surface, turns out he used one train to punch out a tunnel and escape. Sealed now, but... Two other human specimens. One arrived not long after the troublemaker, and the last one, not sure when he showed up, thought the first one was going to be lobotomized in Y-17. She got out somehow. The last subject, Klein might know more. He talked to him, then let him leave the think tank. Hope he knew what he was doing. Klein knows things we don't. And I think he told some of those things to the last visitor. Dangerous things that they ever got out. Did you retrieve the technologies yet? We need them, as I have indicated. Why, yes. We are filled with the knowledge you speak of. If you wish to know more, simply ask the others. They can help you. the last visitor, well, the one just before you, had an interesting name from some language that's almost impossible to speak. What did we speak about? Melancholy fellow, had questions about uh, history, but our conversation got interrupted. Twice, I believe. Once when the trains got derailed, and then a second time. Oddly enough, now that I'm accessing my databanks, I don't recall what the second time was. Mobius's incessant transmissions keep distracting me. Also, we didn't brain scrub the visitor. He may have left with some knowledge he shouldn't have. I believe, maybe. Oh well, I'm sure it's of no consequence. I don't make many mistakes in calculation or perception, so probability favors me. I am Dr. Klein. Chief Head Researcher of Logistical Operations and Ideology here at Big Mountain. I am surprised you have not heard of me. I am first in my field, first chair, as it were, back in the days of chairs. Dr. Mobius was not the horrifying creature you saw upon the screen, twisted by science. 
He was once one of us. A friend. He researched in directions contrary to the think tank. Brains, 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 always about the brains. So we exiled him. He says he left of his own volition, but that was to save him the embarrassment. Now he sends his intelligence consuming scorpions from the Forbidden Zone to plunder the secrets of Big Mountain. He is a menace. I'm not certain. Perhaps it only affects machines. If so, you may be immune. If it is chems, then we have nothing to fear. Since we are afraid, it must not be chems, and you need not fear, which means you can test it. Logical. It's a side effect of the cerebral scrubbing. It won't stop you from excreting, or asking questions, apparently. I have to correct that next time. Hormonal aggressive tendencies are actively suppressed, however. They are a no-no and not permitted in the think tank. The scrubbing also ensures your silence to keep Big Mountain safe. This facility is top secret, and you cannot speak of it to anyone outside of Big Mountain. Should have done it with the last batch, and the anti-aggression scrub. We had to take precautions after the last visitors. They caused a great deal of damage in a short time. Should have made sure they couldn't mention Big Mountain once they left. An oversight. Dr. Eight and Dr. O could tell you more. Dr. O more than Eight. The battle against the visitors damaged Eight's voice module. Suffice to say, those visitors are unwelcome. They stole a great many secrets and much technology. Impertinent. They also broke one of my trains. This is the think tank. The nerve center of Big Mountain. The greatest research center known to man and to us. Here we test and test and test some more in the name of science. Atomic power, nuclear power, and scientific power. Yes, because the intellectually challenged see an M and a T next to each other and take Occam's razor to it. While you are here, you will refer to this place properly, and you will do the same with the other scientists here. That glowing red scar? That laser lobotomy canyon maze carved in the landscape as if by some child? It is Mobius's fortress. From that hemorrhoidal fissure, he sends his amazing robo-scorpions to terrify and irritate us. <laughs> he always tended to the dramatic. Ask Boros. I believe he knows more about the fence than any brain. Except maybe Mobius. Mobius was involved in their construction, if I recall. But he's such a hack, he probably was reading off Boros's notes and schematics. Well, we didn't actually do it. We tried to clean up after, as always, but usually the autodoc runs on remote. But we programmed it. Or Mobius did. Still, this new wrinkle with the Tesla coils in your skull was unexpected. I mean, we predicted we'd have a breakthrough eventually, but... Dala knows more. She supervised your spine peel and the heart circumcision, then dumped them both into the tanks in the sink above. Quite sanitary. Sure took her time. She always takes longer than projected with lobotomite surgeries. Not sure why. Yes. In all probable likelihoods, yes. Possibly. That it may have gone to Mobius is merely an inkling. I don't know why, but it may be something involving the surgery code. Actually, I don't know. All I know is it misplaced itself. Or it floated off. They get into robots sometimes and go on a tear.
Yes. Always leaves back doors into things. Have to keep finding them and closing them. The auto-doc is now erased of his routines. It was thorough. Only Mobius would know for sure what happened with the procedure. Perhaps. Well, and your brain, of course. It would know as well. It can communicate the procedure when we examine it. It is conceivable to trace its surgical scalpel prints once we have the brain. Might take some time, but your brain has no pain nerve to scream at us while we dissect it. Convenient. I detest screaming in my lab. Mobius's legacy code was in the old auto dock. Yes, it fried itself after your procedure so he couldn't tell for sure. It is unfortunate. We would have benefited from knowing how the breakthrough occurred. Even if we installed another chip, the information is lost. Why does he seek our destruction? Why did he build robot scorpions with intelligence training stingers? It is because he hasn't cleaned his biogel in a long time. Clearly he's got some sort of psychological corrosion. He's mad. Dr. O is certain of his findings, and no one else in the think tank is willing to test the results. Loss of brainial power. Terrifying. O has said on many occasions his inability to comprehend Mobius's robo-schematics is because of repeated robo-scorpion stings. And you return as curious as a teddy bear. Looping, yes. It is a scientific fact that hormones drive a percentage of lobotomites into recursive behavior patterns. We haven't researched this, as my colleagues care little about the behavior patterns of lobotomites once their brains are removed. It is why so many are littered around the facility, like skin envelopes, discarded after they are peeled open and the contents extracted. It varies according to the number and density of lobotomites that have infected an area. In 43% of observed cases, two lobotomites left alone will fight for dominance or inject bodily fluids into each other's orifices. Unsanitary. I have tried to observe more cases but subjects seem unwilling to release bodily fluids in my presence. And... Ah.
right. Has it come for her? Hellos? You... The lobotomite animal before me. What other terrifying terrors will plague us in our quest for knowledge? Communists? Communist animals, perhaps? Be warned. Attempt to propaganda me. I will shriek as a frightened babe calling loyal cyber dogs to my aid. Do you comprehend, commie animal? Just as I feared. Questions. Quizzes. Just as there were in American high school. And if there are no answers, how will the think tank graduate? The radar fence protects us all. If evidence is correct, the one who built it is me. It keeps anything with a disembodied brain inside, like us. And anything without a brain, also inside. It is the ultimate defense against communist aggression. There'll be no infectious ideas on my watch. What? Why would you do either of those things? That is madness. There is nothing outside Big Mountain. Uh, we're pretty sure. Uh, we would know. Ever since my anxiety-filled days of powerlessness and being bullied in American high school, I have dreamed of such security as the fence. That and giant cybernetic dogs that would ruthlessly patrol and kill anyone who wasn't my friend, like Richie Marcus and Betsy Bright. Who's laughing now, Betsy? I hope you and Richie are happy smoking in your radioactive coffins. I'm glad you never came to my birthday party. No! Beyond is death, despite mounting evidence to the contrary. No matter where these strange humans wander in from with their ideas and new brains, there is nothing beyond Big Mountain. Enough! Stop filling my precious brain cell units with irrelevant data. You sound like the other visitors, making wild claims of a world beyond, where there is a war beyond war. It is unproven and unthinkable. Bother the other doctors with your crackpot theories. I have no time. None of us do. Before you is the brain of Dr. Boros, head of animology, bestology, and DNA scrambling technology here at Big Mountain. I lay the bones and hearts of animals bare beneath my searing gaze, especially the dogs. I did so love dogs once, especially Gabe, that rascal. But there are many animals to shape. Industrious Cazadors, the happy-go-lucky Night Stalkers. They are my living, breathing DNA test tubes. Indeed. Docile. Curious. Safe. Sterile. They are contained here at Big Mountain to preserve DNA and for observation. No, such creatures are found only here, for research purposes. They would no more be capable of escape than breeding. I cannot expect a lobotomite to understand the careful surgical castrating procedures used in their creation. Perhaps a demonstration of my castrating power would settle your doubts. Oh, that's...
that's too bad. Perhaps we can perform a sterility castration some other time then. Nonsense! That is what you speak. Nonsense! From beyond! I was at the top of my high school class in American high school. I knew facts. I knew figures. I knew data. We would know if our research was flawed. It is not. We never contradict ourselves. So do not even try. In 2000, let's see, carry the three, then count backwards with the great static, or beyond, there were the tarantula debates, and something about hawks which made it around. 2003, May, Tuesday, it was definitely Tuesday. Why are we even debating this? What you ask is of no importance. Mobius besieges us. There are more important things to worry about than data and facts. Have you done all we asked? If not, we will not hesitate to ask again.
salutations and felicitations, sir, and a most jocund welcome to the scene. I am your electronic valet and household central processor. May I be of service, sir? Regrettably not, sir. All modules and habitat are synthetic personalities atop a mundane operating system. There is no intelligence here, sir. Indeed, sir. Though if sir's aim is to activate them, I lament to inform, sir, that most have been offline for some years. If sir were to ask my opinion, I should venture that sir is better off without them. However, if sir is determined to inflict upon sir's self their dubious services, sir might locate backup personality disks elsewhere in the facility. Tragically, the core operating systems are also located on the personality tapes, sir. Once the tape is installed, sir may request I switch their dialectic interfaces off, and I shall oblige with great delectation. However, sir will still be required to locate and install a backup holotape to access their functionality. As I am given to understand, sir, this facility was once the property of a Dr. Mobius. He crafted the personality modules as part of a collection of experiments on the subject of machine-human interface. As to the reason for the unusual choices of devices to receive the modules, I cannot say. In addition to managing the personality matrices of the other household utilities, I can provide Sir with direct access to the commissary. Any goods Sir might require may be purchased through my shopkeep interface, whence tiny robots should deliver... Might I be of service, sir? Sir is looking exceptionally sharp today, if Sir will permit the compliment.
intruder. You will not escape the eyes of my robo-scorpions. Or...